Welcome to the Kenny Hack. Hello everybody, welcome back to the Kenny Hack. This is going to be, I guess, episode two of Rotary Jigs. And what we're going to be going over in this video, hopefully I can fit all of these ones into one video and not take too long. These are kind of just your standard tumblers, the large size and small size. I think I got these at um, Hobby Lobby or Michael's. And I think these were around like six bucks. I think these are around nine dollars. So they're kind of fairly reasonable to play around with. This is a standard pint glass from the dollar store. And this is a pint mug from the dollar store. Kind of going to be giving quick little setups, things I found that work with these kind of mugs and tumblers. And we'll kind of go from there. So the first one we're going to go over is just your standard pint drinking glass now if you're just starting off with these rollers like normally i have this for this size would be shrunk up a little narrower like right now it's not barely catching the rollers i'm not going to reset up all the jig like normally i'd have this pinched in a couple rollers narrower so i'd grab this better but as you would find these pint glasses when they're pushed all the way up against this the stop bar don't reach the back rollers to level it out I mean you can leave it in there crooked and you can jack your rotary up until the glass is level but that kind of takes you know a lot of fidgeting around trying to find the right height of material or making a big wedge that will sit under here what I found that works is get some of these these are I believe either three-quarter or one inch magnets you can get these at any of your hardware stores and just attach them on to the end of the little stop block here and they come in like little one-eighth inch three sixteenths inch thickness where you can kind of set them down in there and set it down where the lip of the glass is running against the face of the magnets and to where it's reaching over to get to your rollers. Needed at least one more on there. So now it's gonna, you can use your rollers as your height adjustment and get it set to where it's level. And as long as you get it set up fairly square, which is kind of the tough part with these ones. Now it's going to be sitting level across here. It's on the rollers. It should roll fairly smooth. Give it a spin. Like it's kind of spanning a wide deal with this setup right here. It does a little better when the rollers are narrowed up, but just trying to save time and not have to switch all the setups around. It would still probably work right there. So that's some quick easy little fix these are only a couple dollars for like a pack of four buy a couple packs of them and you can make up whatever length you need to shorten up the gap from this stop face to your leveling rollers so this is the first pint tumbler these are probably actually about 18 ounce tumblers with this standard setup it's gonna reach over to your span over to your rollers and gonna run just fine in there just get it leveled up square to your laser face right there and these are tours are actually pretty good they, these rollers kind of have like a little rubber surface and they seem to do fairly well as long as your cups not super light it doesn't seem to do too bad with slippage but like if you could see like with this setup the edge of the cup is almost pushed back to past the edge of the rollers so even once again even though it's plenty long enough stick a couple of them in there and that until you get the lip of the cup riding on them plastic roll them rubber coated rollers and it's a lot less chance of it slipping. Now that the edge is on the grip, 
excuse me, have to, you have to always get these axes lined up. And that's when you first put it in there, set it to spin. If it's, if it's, if it's coming off the rollers, you're not set up square. So you always have to kind of play around with it. And that's kind of the tough part of setting up these things is getting to where it's going to sit in there, run steady and spin straight on. That's where this or tour design kind of lacks is this thing can kind of doesn't self center to the axis. So you kind of have to play and get it set up to where it's centered properly. And you'll know if it's out of out of alignment. If you start turning these rollers and the cup is spinning off of it, you're not lined up across that x-axis. Once you got it centered up pretty good, it's going to spin and stay fairly well on there. Same thing here with these big tumblers. I find it's always better if you get the edge of the glass onto the rubber coated rollers instead of pushing all the way up against this face. So once again, you just adjust your roller height until you get it down to level. You can see, actually with this setup right now, I need to really close up these roller gaps. I can't lower this axis far enough to get this down to level. If I couldn't fix it that in, like if you tried to wedge it up this way, as it spins, it's gonna walk off, walk off the face. You can always tip it towards this face plate, but if you tip it away, as it turns, it's gonna start walking away from it. So best to like, I find it's always fairly safe to tip it towards, but try not to tip it away. And if you can't lower it far enough, let's try taking one magnet out. See if that helps drop it any lower or makes it worse. Actually, that made it worse. You could try two of them, put two back in. And it's a little closer, but really for this cup, moving this in one more fitting would raise this part up to where it would drop that in down and you could get it back to level. So that's it's mostly just finding what setting roller head setting you need to find for each mug. And then once you get it set up, write it down where you need to have it set up for which mug so you can quickly get it set back to that. Now, this here's getting into the tougher jigs where you might need some power tools to build this, like standard, it's just not gonna, you're not gonna have much working area trying to fit in between the rollers and not hit the handle. So this is kind of some simple I came up with. These are just your stock um, test plugs, sewer plugs, whatever you want to call them. These are actually Oatly brand. Um, you can usually pick these up at the hardware store in like 2 inch, 3 inch, and 4 inch sizes. And if the stock one fits into the mug, alright. Had that a little too tight. This one's a pretty tight fit. I like this brand because it's got a flat flange up on the top. And you can tell when you got your glass pushed all the way up against it and it's sitting square. And then just tighten it and as it tightens it'll swell up that rubber gasket in there and holds it really tight to that and this is very simple these are like four to seven dollars for each of these so you might have about 15 bucks getting all three sizes and for right now this is like the simple setup if they fit right onto the glass you don't need to do anything extra this is all you need so here's just with the standard setup. This is just a straight three inch test plug with a 
believe this is just a 3 8 piece of plywood that I cut into a circle. I'll show you the jig I used to do that. He said it's six and three quarter inch diameter. I got a couple little magnet spacers to get the wooden disc onto the rubber rollers. You have to have the height adjustment about as high as it'll go. I got maybe another eighth of an inch, quarter of an inch left of movement on there, but that got it pretty close to level. And from there, now your handle will miss the rollers. So now you can work on the whole area of the rollers. And kind of like I mentioned in the last one, since this is the radius being turned, you need to know the difference of this diameter versus this diameter. And just divide this diameter by this diameter and to say it's like a factor of two, say this is six and three quarter, this is three and a quarter, it's double the diameter. When you put your image into light burn, double your Y axis length of the image and that'll stretch it out. And once it burns it, it's It'll shrink that back up and you can get your aspect ratio set right. And that's something that just takes a little playing around. Everybody's going to build their jigs a little bit different. You kind of have to just play with it. And if you've seen on a lot of my stuff, I have blue painter's tape on a lot of my mugs. And that there, I just, I just put that on there. I'll send it in the jig and I'll kind of burn an outline of what I'm gonna do and check the aspect ratio is right, like close to the original and kind of stretch it accordingly. So you're mostly just doing filled images. Like I haven't really tried doing like any kind of portrait work or doing an image and seeing if I can stretch that out and see if it'll work or not. Right now I'm just kind of sticking with fills. This here is the circle cutting jig I use with a router. The router just fits, snaps, snaps into this plate. You can set whatever diameter you want to make on the guide here. And it, like this will be like you just screw your screw into here. You set whatever diameter you want, radius you want to cut, lock it into place, and then the router will rotate around and cut these discs. Once again, I already have all the routers. I already had all this circle cutter. It was stuff I have for my woodworking stuff. So it didn't really cost me anything much to make these, but if you don't have this stuff, it might be a little pricey for you. Like unless you know somebody personally that has some woodworking stuff and can cut you a bunch of different size diameter jigs, Maybe go buy them the plywood, say just cut me a bunch of circles from, you know, five inches up to eight inches, like every quarter inch and just supply the wood with them. Have them make you a bunch of different wood discs that you hopefully got something that could match up to whatever cups you want to try. Um, other than that, once again, trying to buy all this woodworking stuff just to make these little jigs really isn't probably worth it. It'd be cheaper just to buy a bigger rotary that is capable of doing mugs with handles. Like if you're, if doing mugs and cups is going to be your main business or main thing you want to do with these lasers, I'd recommend spend the, spend the three or $400 and get the nicest rotary you can get. If it's just more of a hobby and something you're just going to kind of play around with, do the few odd and end jobs here and there, this little $70 rotary I paid for with my first, really my only first and only job I've done with it so far. I did a dozen glasses um, of these pint glasses for a longtime client of mine. He just wanted to try them out, so just make me a dozen. And I made enough profit off of doing a dozen glasses that it paid for this little rotary. So anything I do from here on out, it's paid for itself. So once again, just because these are $70 doesn't mean they can't pay for themselves just in a quick hurry and a couple of little jobs.
and it's just something else to kind of fun and play around with and see what you can do. So hopefully that's kind of a start off on these like you know like maybe the next video I'll go into more detail and do some more of the odd sizes for these mugs like these big mugs the stock three inch doesn't go big enough and the four inches are too big so you kind of have to make up the difference with something else and I'll kind of go over that in the next video try to keep this one as short as possible but anyways, thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next video.